This is thermometer. Let's see your temperature. Damn, it says you're so cool. Probably because you are already subscribed to this channel. So, all these different gyroscopes. BMI gyro? ICM? MPU gyro? The drone is freaking out. Or maybe not. What in the actual f***? Calm down, b***. Let's try to break it down. So I have three identical open racers. The only difference is three different gyro types. In case you don't know, gyroscope is a little piece of magic on your flight controller. It is literally the main sensor on your drone, even if it's a DJI one. Thousands times per second that little component on your flight controller measures your drone angular velocities. Pretty much everything happens on your drone based on this data. So while I have the opportunity, before I break all of these drones, of course I will, I decided to record some black box and compare these gyroscopes. So let's see how they stack against each other, but First, let me call to my gyroscope expert. Listen, the type of gyroscope you have makes no difference. <laughs> you, sir, are a shit pilot. Yes, pure shit. No! You must practice. What the? What the? Take your sorry shit ass outside and do some flying. So if you want to double check which gyro is installed on your flight controller, open CLI and just type status. And there we go, right here it will be gyro equals something. In my case it is MPU 6000. This old flight controller that I have on my bench has ICM 20602. This is a pretty good gyro, but it's pretty old and it's really hard to find a flight controller with it. So. We are not testing this gyro today. You know, I see a lot of people in the internet are skeptical about this or that gyro. They're like, how do I tune Bosch gyro or ICM? Or they're like, this new gyro oscillates like crazy. MPU 6000 was so much better. S so I have three identical racing quads. Well, as identical as I could make them. All of them got heads up motors, Foxier stack, HQ R36 props, and of course Ghost Hybrid Board Duo. The full setup is in the description. But the first drone has Foxier F7 V2, which means it has good old gyro MPU 6000. Second one is on Foxier F7 V3 with Bosch BMI 270. And the last drone is on Foxier F7 V4 with ICM 42688P gyro. Foxier is about to release a second version of v4 flight controller with mpu gyro so you can get v4 either with mpu or icm gyro but i have v4 with icm don't mix icm 20689 with ICM 42688P. 20689 is the one with the breaking problem, the very old gyro, and I don't think anyone is making flight controllers with this gyro anymore. Anyways, these three open racers got three most popular gyros out there. So let's go fly them and record black box. BMI gyro experimental. I can hear how experimental is that. Uh, yeah, all right, let me land. I don't want to burn my motor. Oh, I can't even land. All flights performed on the same Karate Race 6S tune. And honestly, before I started messing with the gyro low pass filters in CLI, I couldn't feel any difference between these three gyros. This is the same camera. I just moved it from here to here because that's what professional YouTubers are known for. But they probably don't use web cameras. All right, maybe, maybe I could feel a little bit more prof wash on BMI gyro, and it's kind of consistent with what I've heard from other pilots. But let's look at the black box. You love black box, do you? Because I don't, who would have thought? So from now on, I'm just gonna say MPU, ICM and BMI without the numbers, because it's pretty annoying to repeat them over and over, and I'm sure you're not gonna mix different ICM types between each other. So we're looking here at the raw gyro measurement spec Spectrum. So the red one here is the most noisy is ICM, then goes yellow, our lovely MPU, and the least noisy is BMI in dark red. So why they're all so different? What's happening? What in the actual f***? Calm down, b***h. 
And the first reason is different gyros, they have different noise levels. If you're nerd enough to open data sheet, then somewhere here you can find what is the noise level for different modes. Like I guess here you see I'm not nerd enough. So different gyros have different noise levels, all right? Another reason, and probably the most important one, different gyroscopes have different internal filtering. They call it gyro hardware filters. Most of the time it's just different low pass filters with different cutoff frequencies. If you don't know what is low pass filter and what is cutoff frequency, I have a video explaining all of that, link in the description. Keep in mind, one does not simply adjust hardware low pass filters. Beta flight filter sliders and filter settings are only affecting software beta flight filters. Gyro hardware filters are sort of baked into that little gyro chip. And in some way they are sort of better than beta flight filters because they are working with the raw data even before downsampling inside the gyro. The downside of these filters, we really don't get to know how exactly they work, what's the formula, because that's a proprietary information from the gyro manufacturers. Smart people like Karate Broad can try to estimate what's the delay from these filters based on the cutoff frequencies published in the data sheets. And we're talking here about sub 1 millisecond values. I can't believe I wanted to put all this information in my previous video with Minchin's tune. <laughs> So this is the raw gyro data before beta flight filters. You see how different is that? Let's see the data after beta flight filters. And now you can see it's way more close to each other. Of course, you can see a little bit that BMI filters a little bit more, ICM filters a little bit less. But I think this is the reason why most people shouldn't worry about what kind of gyro they have installed. This is very important. If you have a nicely built drone, all screws are tight, your frame and your stack doesn't do this. If you have a trusty flight controller that engineers thought well about providing clean power to your gyroscope, and if you have a nice tune or I don't know, defaults, then you absolutely should not worry about which gyro you're using. Which flight controllers are good and trusty? I I'm sorry, I have no idea. Comment down below your experience. I use exclusively Fox here. You know, I'm a drone racer. I don't like trying different stuff. I really prefer saving my time. It might sound like an ad. I guess it's an ad. Hey, Fox here, pay me money right now. I have 2000 subscribers and eight patrons. Also guys, keep in mind, it's all hobby grade electronics, the quality can vary from batch to batch. Say, word on the street is just because it's new don't mean it's good. So if you just build your drone or like replace the flight controller with a new gyro and it suddenly behaves weirdly, the best thing you can do is to check all your screws and then record a black box. I have a big detailed video about how to record black box and where you can share and ask for help. The worst thing you can do, and I see people doing that, is to make a blind Facebook post without black box and to start blaming new gyro, manufacturer, beta flight and even stars. So what can go wrong? For example, I have this 7 inch drone and for whatever weird reason, I have no idea why, but it has a pretty strong resonance at 500 Hz. And I use the tune where dynamic notch just doesn't go that high. This is not the black box from that 7 inch, but you will get the idea. Flying on BMI gyro. It was pretty alright, because on BMI gyro 500 Hz gets more attenuation than on ICM gyro. The moment I installed ICM gyro on this drone, boom, it was over. Well, not really over, but the motors got way more noisy. I could have blamed ICM gyro, right? But after black box, that was an easy fix. Just scroll down on filter stop and change max frequency HZ from 400 to like 600 and click save. Sometimes you might have to increase the notch count, but three is plenty enough. This was just one case. Sometimes you might need to play, for example, with the filter sliders or for example, RPM filters. You guys probably know that. But it's always better if you can fix your mechanical problem or electrical noise if you have it. For electrical noise problems, you might need to solder an extra capacitor on the flight controller power or, for example, on the 3 volt rail on the flight controller itself. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. And then you just need to ditch your flight controller or ESC, I'm sorry. Now a section for nerds who are looking for a little bit of extra performance and CLI magic. Hey, are you tired? Because I am kind of tired, but you know, 
If you're tired, at least check the GoPro run at the end, but let's keep going. From these plots, it's pretty obvious that BMI Gyro has way stronger hardware filters. Usually all the black boxes with BMI Gyro look super clean. It's good, but it also could be bad, because we know the more filtering, the more delay. So with BMI Gyro, you are more likely to be okay to turn off some of the Gyro low pass filters, or even both of them. This will bring your overall filter delay down, but you know, be careful with testing. Or you might start moving these filter sliders to the right. For example, in Karate Race Tune Preset, you see there is a Bosch BMI Gyro option, which is experimental so far. I added it here about a half year ago, and I've been using it with all my BMI Gyro racers, and it's been great. If you check the source code for this preset, then you can see that this option just simply disables the first low-pass filter in Beta Flight for Bosch BMI Gyros if you select it. So the ICM Gyro is already kinda a little bit more noisy. So with ICM Gyro, you need to be a little bit more careful with setting up this minimum frequency and maximum frequency for dynamic notch filter. You need to make sure that this fancy filter is catching all your resonances. And don't forget to say thank you to Karate Brot and send him positive vibes, because he made these filters for Betaflight 4.3 to track multiple noise peaks. This was a huge improvement. Keep in mind guys, that for future Betaflight versions, maybe for Betaflight 4.4 or for Betaflight 4.5, the C situation around ICM Gyro might change. Some smart Betaflight developers, not like me, like some other Betaflight developers like Karate Brot or Mr. Steve, they can send little electrons by little wires to the specific addresses, they call them registers, to adjust internal Gyro low pass filters. But for us mortals, they made a CLI command for that, Gyro underscore hardware underscore LPF. By default, it's normal. It can also be option 1, option 2, or experimental. Normal people like I am, like you are most likely, like anyone else, should never mess with this value, because normal default should work pretty good. So for ICM Gyro, normal mode behavior might change in Betaflight 4.4. The work is still going on as far as I know, no promises yet, but the goal is to make ICM Gyro hardware low pass filters similar to MPU hardware low pass filters. And it's sort of important because if all different Gyros have similar internal hardware filters, we would have less problems switching between them. Simple as that. Similar change already has happened for BMI Gyro between Betaflight 4.2 and 4.3. Big thanks to Mr. Chris Rosser. <coughs> there was a huge drama about this change in Betaflight, and here's why. Hold on, but first, let's have a deal. All of these videos are just my personal opinion. I am not an official Betaflight voice, and I never try to be official Betaflight voice. And I cannot be official Betaflight voice. I'm one of the many Betaflight developers and contributors, and I'm just sharing my experience. And if you happen to find it valuable, like and subscribe now! And there is a humble Patreon link in the description, if you want to be even more cool. Back to this BMI change by Mr. Chris Rosser. So BMI Gyros has been supported by Brain FPV long time ago in a separate Betaflight fork for their flight controllers. It was sort of their marketing that Bosch Gyros are way better than any other Gyros out there. It could be true or false, I don't know, I am not actually smart enough to judge that. But by default, these Bosch Gyros have way higher cutoff frequencies for internal gyro hardware filters. It means that there was some risk of burning your motors if you try MPU Betaflight tune on Bosch Gyro. At some point, official Betaflight started supporting Bosch Gyros as well, and Chris Rosser noticed that there is a danger for the users. In the Bosch datasheets, he also found out that we can bring BMI hardware filters down to the level similar to MPU gyros. And he proposed this change before Betaflight 4.3 official release. This is kinda a long read, but it's pretty interesting. The link will be in the description. He does some measurements and even shows some screenshots from the users who burn their gear because of this BMI setting. Alright, here I think it's, it's a little bit too much. If you have that type of a noise picture, you probably have way bigger problems than 
like a missing BMI gyro setting. So he made internal BMI gyro filters way stronger than they are by default. And I think this saved a lot of motors and butts from burning with Betaflight 4.3. So now pretty much anyone can use regular filter tunes and presets with Bosch BMI gyros. Kind of big deal, isn't it? The opponents of this change were saying that we are sort of reducing the performance of Bosch gyros. And this is true. More filtering, more delay, obviously. But but you can compensate for that with less beta flight filters. So these Chris Rossers changed was merged and we are sort of safe now not burning motors with BMI gyros. But if you want to try the opposition you just search for BMI in presets and there we go BMI 270 filter settings. And in the source code of this preset you can see set gyro hardware low pass filter equal option 2. Whereas default Chris Rosser's behavior is normal for gyro hardware LPF. And further down in this BMI preset you can see that he set the beta flight low pass filters to pretty low values and also pt3 type this will be pretty strong filters with sort of a lot of delay anyways i think majority of people shouldn't worry about this bmi preset and just use other official presets that they can find or just defaults that should be all right unless someone is really curious this is the last plot i wanted to show you guys today this is me trying different bmi hardware filter settings so yellow is normal for beta flight 4.3 Red is option 1 and dark red is option 2. And as expected, normal has stronger filtering, option 1 has less filtering and option 2 even less filtering. It's kind of interesting that normal and option 1 has stronger attenuation between 100 and 200 Hz. And then everything kind of equalizes at 300 Hz. I guess that's some BMI magic we don't get to know. Of course, I also tried experimental BMI mode and it was pretty much unflyable, very noisy, but also kind of weird 30, 40 hertz oscillations. They really look like something we can tune out with the PID values. That could be idea for the next video. Or, or maybe not. Let me know what you think. Normal mode, option 1 and option 2 honestly flew pretty good on my drone. There is no any conclusions for this section of the video. I just tried different modes for Bosch Gyro and showed them to you. That's it. I think that's enough about gyros. Come on. See you in the next video, if I'm not lazy. Hey guys, you need a plug in your quad first. That's official. If your quad is not plugged in, no flying. You can see the riding on the pavement. Young kids that grow up in basements. Online, a whole new generation. I'ma make mine, so you better go take it. Always they need a new replacement. Decentralized, can't contain it. We're changing lives, yeah, upgrading. Call it to a side of the older generation. I think that we all have no keys to what the guy is. Ain't gonna be this far, yeah. We were built to die, yeah. Are you a shit pilot? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a shit pilot for sure. <laughs> but you are too. Yeah, I'm a shit pilot. All right, that'll do.